This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Giving can be done through Patreon, PayPal, or Cash App. All links are in the description. As stated over the years, if you do give, let it be in accordance with the scriptures. Love you. Let's get it. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day. In the Lord Jesus Christ, as always, today is Sunday, August 13th, 2023. Sunday, August 13th, 2023. The time is currently 3.05 p.m. Um, I posted this and I have discussed this in uh, length in many sermons, but I felt like it was it was good to go ahead and make a video about this. More of a, um, a condensed version of some of the sermons that I've done on this topic. So I'm going to read it, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to expound on some of the points that I made. So you want real church? They aren't going to teach you this or break it down to you like this in the so-called church buildings, churches in session. It's crazy how the false prophets have deceived people so much that they got you actually believing God is talking about a snake that looks like the picture when he was referring to the serpent in Genesis. Let's take a look at the scripture. So the picture we have is um this right here people literally think this is what it's talking about for those of us who are of age we understand the word we know this ain't it <laughs> eve was not talking to this let's go back up and lord god said unto the serpent because thou has done this Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It clearly says serpent seed, thy seed, meaning the serpent. If we go just based on the picture, that scripture makes absolutely no sense. It would further not make sense because... Women don't carry seed, the man does. But when we understand the scriptures a prophecy about Christ, then we understand. So what about the serpent? Was Satan a snake? Was Satan a snake when he came to Eve? LOL, no, he was and is a man. The serpent historically the serpent is historically known as the ancient worm. The worm is known as the little king of the earth. This is representing the physical, the flesh and the weakness of of it we know weakness of the flesh comes from what sin and death which leads to death and that's where satan gets his power he gets his power through death he doesn't get it through life he can't this is why christ himself said this in reference to himself but i but i am a worm and no man a reproach of men and the spies of the people all they that see me laugh me to scorn they shoot out the lip they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Let's go deeper. The worm mentioned in that scripture and many other places is a reference to the crimson grub. Now, I didn't have a picture of it, but what we'll do is we'll go do a little quick google search i did a sermon about this a long time ago a long time ago you see that this is a crimson grub little worm it's red All right this is why christ was talking about i'm but a worm my god my god why have thou why have why have thou forsaken me that's that uh, scriptural reference right there it's, it's referencing this right here christ shed his blood The worm mentioned in that scripture and many other places is a reference to the crimson grub because of its color, crimson red, blood. 
He is saying, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I am weak. I am a worm because of this flesh and blood. Remember, Christ said that, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of trembling away from me. Christ went through everything that we could ever, we could ever deal with. Shout out to Brother Aniel and Brother Jay. Shout out to y'all. Since your name popping up right now. <laughs> um. He's, yeah, he, he said, take this cup of trembling from me if it be possible. He dealt with everything that we could deal with in the flesh. This is why when you come to him with the different things you deal with, the sins, he understands. He completely understands. Why? Because he was subjected to do those sins. He was tempted to do them, but he didn't do them. The kingdom of God deals with the spiritual kingdom where the true power is, where the big God, excuse me, where the big kings reside. This is why after Christ's resurrection, he had flesh and bones, not flesh and blood. Blood is produced in the bones, but he had no need for blood after his resurrection because it had been sprinkled on the mercy seat for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And just so you can um, see it real fast. Blood produced, if I can spell right, in bone marrow <clears throat> red blood cells are formed in the red bone marrow of bones stem cells in the red bone marrow are called hemocytoblast they give rise to all the form elements in blood if a stem cell commits to becoming a cell called a how do you pronounce that pro erythroblast it will develop into a new red blood cell that's why Christ said that, let me get that scripture. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would, cry, would immediately cry out. There's blood in the stones? Well, God told you that the, the blood cries out from the ground, didn't he? You notice this is a reference to Cain and Abel. Your brother's blood is crying out. The blood cries out. And also, a lot of stones, they are literal bones. A lot of stones, they are literal bones. They have blood in them, blood preserved in them. Now, going back to what we posted, um, again, blood is produced in the bones. But he had no need for blood after his resurrection because he had, because it had been sprinkled on the mercy seat for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thought and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones. They thought he was a ghost. As ye see me have, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Look at my wounds. Look at my hands. If I was a ghost, then I wouldn't be able to do the stuff I'm doing. Then he asked him for what? He said, you have any broiled fish and any honeycomb? And he ate so he, so they could see him eating like, whoa, if he was a, a ghost and since, you know, a spirit, an apparition or whatnot, then he wouldn't have been eating. He was trying to prove to them like, I am literally resurrected from the dead, literally. Because remember, at first, they didn't recognize him. They mistook him for the gardener. It was more so the words. So how do we know that Satan is a man? One, Satan used to be a son of God. The angels of old saw God Almighty create. War upon are the foundations thereof fastened. He's speaking to Job. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? We know this is a reference to Christ. Who laid the cornerstone of salvation? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, saying, where were you? Lucifer is a morning star, but he is not the morning star. Lucifer literally means morning star. So where were you when the, the Lucifers, <laughs> plural, the cherub, because Lucifer used to be what? The anointed cherub. Where were you when the, the cherubims sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? 
Two, Satan is a god, yet he, yet um, excuse me, yet he also said that we are gods, but shall die like men because of our collective disobedience, tracing back to Adam and Eve. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. A son is a child, a daughter is a child, and all the sons, the children of God, shouted for joy when God was creating. But what? But ye shall die like men. You will die like just flesh and blood beings. I made you to be immortal, but you will no longer be immortal. You will die and fall like one of the princes. You're going to fall just like Satan. You're going to die just like him. Why? Because of the curse. Who is he speaking to in the context of the scripture? He's speaking to Israel. Psalms, um... Let me get it real fast so y'all can see. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rear them out of the hand of the wicked. This is what we were supposed to do. This is what our ancestors were supposed to do. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why? Because they, they were doing wickedly. They were not judging righteously. Everything ain't where it's supposed to be. That's why he came and set the chief cornerstone where it was supposed to be. And set the foundation for everything else. Well, we should say reset it. I have said what? Ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Who's supposed to do what? To judge righteously. To judge justly. Which is exactly what he tells us. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. He's telling him to arise, God, because the people were not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And Christ references this to the, uh, the Pharisees right here. Jesus answered him, many good works have I showed you for my father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. When Christ was declaring to be the Son of God, he was declaring to be God in the flesh. They understood that. So when people talk about Christ never declared to be um, God, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They don't understand the language because it's not meant for them to understand it. The oracles, we are the oracles of God. The, the, the mysteries and everything was given to us. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, he didn't just say, it said, he said, I, he said, I'm the one that said that y'all are gods. You're God. Now who's he speaking to? He's speaking to the Jews. So he's saying, Jews, Israel. Hebrew Israelites, I wrote and I told you in your law that you are God. So how are you going to get on me by declaring and saying that I'm the son of God? Because you're not gods without me. You can't be a God without me. Because I made y'all and you come from me. Again, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, who the word of God come to? The gods, the Jews. This ain't me saying it, it's Jesus saying it. You got a problem with it, take it up with him. Just because you lack understanding in regards to what it means to be a God, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Christ himself is saying that we are gods. He's specifically saying that the Jews were made and were originally gods. Ye are gods. We just looked at it. In Psalm 32, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the son of God. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe the father 
is in me and I am him. So, okay, you don't believe I'm a God. You don't believe I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Jew. Okay. Believe the works that I'm doing. Believe the works that I'm doing then. Believe the works that I'm doing that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I am him. Okay. If you don't, if you don't believe the physical part, then believe, I mean, if you don't believe the spiritual part, then believe the physical. Cause you can't sit here and say that I ain't putting in the work. Once you see the work, then you have to, okay, why is he doing the work? But even if you don't wonder why he's doing the work, you still see I'm doing the work. So either way, you dead in the water. Because I'm still doing the work of a God, a immortal being that has the knowledge of good and evil. I'm judging righteously according to the Father and what the Father would do. And those who are in the know, they understand this language. So it's not me saying that we are gods. It's Christ himself that said we are gods. And this is what he's telling them. Like, how are you going to get on me for declaring to be the son of God when I say that in your own law that you say you believe that you are gods? So if I want to say that I'm the son of God and I come from Israel, then I can do that. It's on them to prove if he was or wasn't. And they tried to, you know, lie and everything, but, you know, we ain't got to go there. Now, going back over here. Uh, two. Satan is a god, yet he also said that we are gods, but shall die like men because of our collective disobedience, tracing back to Adam and Eve. So we read that. The gods were originally children of God. Adam and Eve were immortal, but they were not gods. God wanted them to become gods through righteousness, not disobedience. It's like a person learning about sex through fornication instead of your parents teaching you. Then you get married and enjoy and learn about sex through and in marriage. From sex comes seed. Seed is the children that are supposed to be raised up in righteous, up in righteousness for perpetual generations, serving as witnesses to the defeat of Satan. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they became gods in unrighteousness through disobedience. Don't believe me? Watch this. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Remember what Satan said? God know that in the day you eat thereof, you shall be as us. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That happened. He just twisted it. To know what? Let me go back. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. You see? You see that? And live forever. They were already going to live forever. They had immortality. But when they ate from the tree unrighteously, they lost their immortality, but they gained godhood. God wanted Adam and Eve to have not only immortality, but also Godhood, God status, made in the image of God. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So who said the man had become a God, knowing good and evil? The Lord God himself. Because they now had the knowledge of good and evil, they understood they were going to die. So what would have been the next move? To eat from the tree of life, to try and reverse the curse. The Lord God understood this, and so did Satan. Satan was banking on them doing that, but God Almighty cut their way off from the tree of life. But why? If they would have eaten from the tree of life, they would have received the same judgment as Satan right then. Then guess what? Christ would not have been able to come and redeem mankind because he is the tree of life. So God Almighty blocking the way to the tree of life was his mercy until prophecy could be fulfilled by Christ coming in the flesh, shedding blood and redeeming us back to our former glory. Because the knowledge of Godhood is within all of us through Adam and Eve, and the way to the tree of life is now made known and open 
When a person rejects God's way, which is the gospel of Christ, repent and believe the gospel, they get the same judgment as Satan. Now remember, Satan was a son of God. Look what he says about us. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. And when it says sons of God, it also is talking about daughters of God. The reason that it references the sons of God first, because the man has to be established first. Why? Because the woman came from the man, which is why I call it woe man, from the womb of man. Order, structure. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That ye may be blameless and harmless and what? Gods, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, or that what? That we should be called gods of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. They don't understand when we talk like this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now are we, now are we gods and goddesses. And it doth not what yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like Christ. Christ is the son of God. And therefore we are the lowercase, low, excuse me, lowercase sons of God. Christ is God manifesting the flesh, capital G. So therefore, if we like him, then that what, that, what does that mean? That we are gods manifesting the flesh, which is why he tells us to judge righteously. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall see ourselves as we are, because we shall be like him. Some of us in this flesh are actually older than we know. One reason why he said the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. We see that also in the book of Isaiah. Well, uh, God said, who, the Lord said, who shall go for us? Who shall go for us? But is there more plain, hardcore, straightforward evidence that Satan is a man? Of course. Read verse 16 real careful. Is this the man? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, son of Christ? How art thou cut down, son of the day? Who is today's star? Christ. Because Lucifer is a was a of the seed of Israel. Which means what? Black man. And a Christ. Black man. How are thou cut down to the ground? Which this weaken weaken the nation. I told y'all I'm gonna keep on proving it to you over and over again. That's a prophecy. Go and show me how many people are telling you that the Antichrist is black. I ain't just talking about somebody saying that it's Obama. Anybody can say that. Show me what they gave the scriptures proving it. All right, then. All right, then. You will know a prophet is among you and that God sent me. Sent me to tell y'all, hey, it's go time. It's show time. Let's roll. You ain't got too much time. But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Well, if you ascending above the heights of the clouds, I mean you below the clouds. Because he's speaking to you from the perspective of looking up. As a man in the flesh on the earth, this is, this is tracing back to when he was ruling over the world physically in the flesh during the time period of what we know as Atlantis. I will be like the Most High. I'm going to dwell in the flesh and rule over the people. He just didn't want to rule spiritually. He wanted to rule physically. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall nearly look upon thee and consider thee saying, Is this the beast? Of course. Is this the serpent? Of course. Is this the great red dragon? Of course. Is this the devil? Of course. But what does it say specifically? Is this the man? He could be brought in the head. They're going to say, is this, this him? This is the man. This is the man that made the earth to tremble. That did shake kingdoms. Satan is a man who was originally made in the image of God. 
Well, I thought the Bible says God is a spirit. Yes, he is spirit because the spirit comes first, man. The spirit comes before everything. The spirit comes before the flesh. But what did God say? He created everything for his pleasure, which includes the flesh. So you can experience things in a fleshly form, the spiritual things. There's a difference between in your spirit, you love pizza. You love ice cream. You love cake. You love donuts. If I mention these things right now, let's think about your favorite food in the spirit. Some of you just had your favorite food yesterday, didn't you? You had some hot wings with some fries. Oh, it was jumping, wasn't it? Them hot wings was good. Oh, they were busting. Them hot wings were busting. Did you have the hot wing with the lemon pepper seeds? Come on now. Don't play with me. Don't play with me like that. You're going to make me get in that kitchen. You're going to make me get in that kitchen, cook up some hot wings with that lemon pepper seasoning. I got some organic lemon pepper seasoning in it that I ordered off of Amazon a while back. <laughs> Think about your favorite food right now. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. You can taste it, can't you? You can taste it in your spirit, but there's a difference of the pleasure of your favorite food in your spirit and actually partaking of it physically. So God manifested what is spiritual into the physical so the two can be one like it's supposed to be like it was from the beginning. So you can have spiritual pleasure, spiritual joy, and also manifest it and have the spiritual ple uh, physical pleasure and physical joy or what is spiritual of enjoying your favorite food with your senses. My, my, my. They don't break it down to you like this. They don't tell you this. I wonder why we do this. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms? I want to make sure I said that with what I just said. Cause I know so much. Oh, God is a spirit. We know that. The Bible references Christ as the son of God, which is talking about the spirit, but it also references, references, excuse me, references is, <laughs> y'all know I'm talking too fast. Let me slow down. It also references him as the son of man, which is dealing with what? With the physical, with the physical, but everything starts in the spiritual and then is manifested into the physical. More evidence. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. Count the number of the beast. Serpent, the enchanter, the wizard, the deceiver, the necromancer, the worshiper of the dead, the lover of death the lover of unrighteous hatred, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. The worm, the little king of the earth, for Satan is the god of this earth, for it is a number of a man. Eve was not talking to a snake like in the picture. She was talking to a man who God Almighty symbolized and symbolizes as a serpent because of his actions and behaviors, just like Christ is symbolized as the sheep, and the lion because of his actions and behaviors. And actually, the sheep has seven eyes. We see that in the book of Revelation. If you don't believe me, you already know we got no reason to make nothing up. Let me see if I can get it real fast for you. Seven eyes. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns. Seven horns represent what? The seven churches and seven eyes. The seven eyes are, the, again, the seven churches that go throughout the earth and report back to God, which are what? The seven spirits, capital S, of God sent forth into all the earth this is how you know the catching away what we call the catching away, what people um properly call the rapture happens before the time of jacob trouble because the church 
is a part of the lamb. We are slain with Christ. And the lamb is in the midst of the throne. Just like we see Christ in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Before the time of Jacob's trouble. But they lie to you and say, the catching away is a false doctrine. They are liars. They are speaking false doctrine. They are leading you astray. They're taking your blessed hope because that's what the Bible calls it. The blessed hope. Just in case you don't believe me. Blessed hope. Where is it at? Where is it at? Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me get, um, let me see, let me see. Is it 1 Thessalonians 5? But at times, and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. We're not appointed to the day of the Lord. Let me go down. Let me go down. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore what? Wherefore comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Cover yourself together with what? That you're not appointed to wrath. Now we just saw where it mentioned the lamb with the seven eyes in the book of Revelation. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. We're going to look at the sixth seal. For the great day, let me go back, and say it to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the what? The wrath of the lamb. He just told you that we're not appointed to wrath. We are symbolically the bride of Christ. Christ doesn't pour out his wrath upon his bride because the wrath has already been poured out upon him for us. I may be angry with my wife. I may be angry with my children, but I'm not going to pour out my full wrath upon my wife because I will destroy her. I'm not going to pour out my full wrath upon my children because I would destroy them. I'm stronger than them. So why would Christ pour his wrath upon us when the wrath was poured out upon him for us? Y'all don't believe the word of God. That's why you keep on believing false prophets. And you can get the same judgments as them. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Yet all throughout the scriptures, he tells us to stand because he gives us the power to stand. Now let me go back. Y'all got me amped up today. Let me go back to Revelation, and let me get this scripture real fast. John having this vision, right? And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girth about the path with a golden girdle. The Son of Man, he's seeing him in the flesh. His head and his head were white like wool. We're going to read all that. Uh, go right here. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth, went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last now we go down he's going to give the mystery of it write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter he's going to tell you the mystery he's going to tell you the mystery let me, let me get this scripture real fast. Let me get this scripture real fast. We're going to jump back over here. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. He's in the midst of them in heaven. This happens before the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, I think we want to go to, let's go to chapter four. After this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. 
which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. It's talking about Christ, he got the rainbow around his head and everything. What did it say? And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. You got twenty-four elders because you got two, I mean twelve times two. You got twelve tribes, two witnesses per tribe, Old Testament, New Testament, twelve times two is twenty-four. And they are seated and clothed in white raiment, and they have on their heads crowns of gold. They have on their heads crowns of gold because we have received our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning what before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. You got seven lamps because you got seven churches. Seven spirits of God. And where are they? Before the throne. A door was open. Come up hither the catching away but no they lie to you they lie to you what do you say about us a city set on the hill cannot be hid we are the light of the world let's go back just in case you don't let's go back to that one scripture Revelation 5. Let me move this so you can see it. And out, the, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning for the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the, be and of, excuse me, of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Christ is a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was slain for us, right? having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. We were sent by the Father through Christ. Like, y'all still don't get it? Why do you keep on letting them lie to you? Why do you keep on letting them lie to you? Let me get this scripture. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to do what? To have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. To what? To stand before the Son of Man. Now, hold on now. Let's go to Revelation 6. Let's go back to Revelation 6. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We're going to be able to stand before the Son of Man because we're going to be standing with Him. They're not going to be able to stand because they're going to be hiding. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be hiding. There's another scripture that, um, oh yeah, let me see. Let me, let me get that for you real fast. We read that in what? First Thessalonians. For your for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Second Peter three ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. We are not appointed to the day of the Lord. We are not appointed to the day of his wrath. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The heaven shall pass away. What do you say in Revelation 6? Go back up. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island will move out of their places. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not, what? Watch. Which is what he told you. He told you to watch ye and pray always that you are counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass to stand before the Son of Man. If you don't watch, he will come upon you as a thief. If you do watch, then he can't come upon you like a thief, which is what he says. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So if you are watching, and you are praying, then you will know what hour he is coming. 
You will know when it's time for the catching away. You will know when it's time for the rapture. You won't be led away with false doctrine. People talking about, oh, it's September uh, 12th or whatever. I got videos going back years ago and I, I debunked that. Debunked that in the Revelation 12. And I showed you what Revelation 12 is really about. Revelation 12 is really about the day of the Lord. Revelation 12 is, is, is we'll we look at it, we'll look at it. Behold, I come as a thief. What do he say? Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Oh, if he's naked, then what did he say in, what did he say? I don't want to forget what I was going to, I was going to look up. Um, what did I say? What did I say? I said I was going to show you something. Oh, yeah, Revelation 12. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and what? And naked. Why are they naked? Because they're not watching. They were not watching. They fell away. Now, going to Revelation 12, because we just mentioned it. Remember, prophecy, past, present, future, past, present, future. And it's tell you the third part of the stars of heaven, and they are cast into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which is ready to be delivered for the devoured child as soon as it was born. She brought forth a man child. We know this is a reference to Christ. Woman flees. Because running from the serpent, right? And there was what? War in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. The dragon fought. His angels and prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This is a prophecy about Revelation 6, the sixth seal more specifically. Which is why it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devils come down to you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. And he goes after the woman because he can't get to Christ. Now going back to Revelation 6. We look at the uh, the sixth seal. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Why? Because Christ's presence, his glory is so bright that it makes everything else look dark. And the what? The stars of heaven fell unto the earth, the fallen angels, Satan and his angels. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken, of a mighty wind. We know this hasn't happened yet because we haven't been caught up with him. We just proved it to be caught up with him. But we got that. We're going to get this real fast and then we're going to close. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Now, what did he just tell you right here? Was it Revelation uh, 3? Or Revelation 1, yeah. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. Going back. And he said unto you, he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. They don't understand this. They don't understand the catching away. They don't understand what we was properly called the rapture because it's not given to them. And even if it is given to them, a lot of them, they just take it because somebody else is preaching it and they still lead people astray to worship false God, but not the true Messiah of the scriptures. We don't do neither here. We give true prophecies and we point you to the true Christ through the true scriptures, not no fake ass scriptures. We give you real swords, real armory, real weapons, real tools for you to be successful in Christ and fight the, the damned devil. Because that's what he is. He's damned. 
Now you see they're leading you astray. I keep on proving it over and over and over again. And people still don't see it. Why? Because maybe it's not given to you to know the mystery or mysteries. With that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared.